national champion. And at 17 years of age, at the top of her form. But this young lady from Walnut Creek, California, will be tested today by one of the strongest women's fields in a decade. It's the 1983 National Women's Gymnastics Championship. Seventeen-year-old Tracy Talavera, the two-time defending all-around national champion. For two straight years, she has proved she is the best female gymnast in the United States. But today, Tracy will be tested by two youngsters, 14-year-old Diane Durham and 15-year-old Mary Lou Retton. Both Durham and Retton under the tutelage of Romanian Bella Caroli, the man who coached Nadia Comaneci to nine Olympic medals. It's the 1983 McDonald's Women's National Gymnastics Championship. Hello again, everyone. I'm John Tesh reporting from the gym floor. You know, it's most frightening to think of 17-year-old Tracy Talavera as the wily old veteran. But so goes it in women's gymnastics. Many times to the very young go the gold medals. Joining me with expert commentary today is the only American gymnast to win a medal in the Olympic Games in the last 50 years. He is Peter Corman, who is also coach of the U.S. Naval Academy. Peter Tracy has her work cut out for her. She sure does. A very strong field this season, specifically two junior gymnasts, Mary Lou Retton and Diane Durham. Mary Lou stunned the gymnastics community this season when she won the American Cup, beating the top Soviet gymnast. Diane Durham, also a superstar in the young age, and she won a major international event last season. But you can't speak about women's gymnastics in the United States without mentioning Julianne McNamara. And since this is the all-around competition, each one of these young girls will be competing in each of the four disciplines. Very simply, the best aggregate score will give us our all-around women's national champion. Those disciplines are the vault, the uneven parallel bars, the beam, and the floor exercise. And Peter, now after the compulsory or preliminary exercises, which count 50% of the total in the all-around, we find the youngster Diane Durham in first place. And that's a bit of a surprise, because traditionally Diane and Mary Lou have not done well in the compulsory rounds. They've relied on their very strong optional competition to pull their score up and go into the championship. So this is something we're seeing for the first time. The optional exercises, of course, the more ambitious and the tougher of the exercises. Tracy Talavera, our defending champion, getting ready for her floor exercise, her first routine. A critical routine for Tracy. She's had trouble with a specific move here, the double pike somersault. It's her first tumbling room. We've seen her miss it in the past. If she's gonna move up in this competition, she can't make any mistakes. Here it comes now. Oh no, not enough lift. She came up short, put her knees down. That's a critical mistake. Go hard, Tracy. In her second pass, another double somersault. Oh, she made that one, but just barely. You know, John, Tracy has thrown a lot in the last year, and that really does affect the performer on the floor exercise. It takes a while to catch up with that growth in size, and your tumbling sometimes is adversely affected. grew up in Walnut Creek, California, but at age 11, she left her parents to live and train with Dick and Linda Mulvindel, Dick Mulvindel, her coach. And that's got to be really tough for a youngster to live that long away from home and train as hard as she has. Winding up the chain now. Double twisting somersault coming up here. Very nice. But two rather low landings at the beginning. Now watch this move. Twisting right to a hand. Very nice. Tracy Talavera, her coach Dick Mulvihill. And let's look at that first pass, Peter. Here it comes, the double pike somersault. She waits too long to get into the pike, comes up short, and lands on one knee. Waiting for a score, 9-2-0. So remember, Tracy was fifth coming into the first rotation after the compulsories, and that's not going to help her move up at all. Now competing on the vault is our leader after the compulsories, Diane Durham. She's already completed one vault. This is her second. Women compete on two vaults. Beautiful vault. 
tremendous lift and flight. That's going to get an excellent score. The score on the first vault was a 9.85 in the women's competition. You take the best vaults. Let's watch this second vault here. Watch the tremendous lift off the horse. Straight body and a near-perfect landing. That's what makes her great at only 14. 9.9, .9, a near-perfect score in her first senior championship. Diane Durham, one year ago, she and her mom moved to Houston, Texas, so Diane could train with Bella Caroli, and she is a young lady to watch. Our leader thus far through the first rotation. We'll be back in a moment. Still in the first rotation here in the Women's National Gymnastics Championship, this is Julianne McNamara in second place after the compulsory or required moves in the all-around competition. She's now readying herself for the floor exercise. She was our national champion in 1980 in the all-around. Julianne has a very difficult floor exercise. Two extremely hard skills. The first one coming up, a full twisting double back somersault. Here it comes now. Oh, nice lift. She landed out of the area, but that's not a critical deduction. That's only a tenth of a point, and she recovered very well. The difference in style from Julianne as compared to Tracy. Julie, certainly more graceful. Very graceful. And, you know, Julianne has really not received the credit she deserves. She's actually the highest American female gymnast in the all-around in placement at the World or Olympic competition. Triple twisting somersault here. Very nice. She's hit her two big tumbling skills. Winding up the routine. This should be a piece of cake. Very nice. And the crowd loves it. 17-year-old Julianne McNamara from Danville, California, in slow motion. Now watch this. Three complete twists. One. Two, three. Very difficult and done very well. Waiting for her average score for the floor exercise, a 9.65. So she's in second place now to Diane Durham. It's Julianne McNamara with her current coach, Don Peters, who will also coach the Women's Gymnastics 1984 Olympic team. All the buzz here, though, at the pavilion has been about this gentleman, Bella Caroli who defected to the U.S. from Romania back in 1981. Those young ladies are affectionately known as Bella's Girls. And here is John Dockery with a report. Julie and Tracy and myself have all competed together before, and it's just that my name isn't as known as theirs. And after a while, you just have to be calm and cool and do the best that you can. Don't let them intimidate you. Diane's my best competition. If we're both competitions. I mean, if we both hit, it's going to be heads up, you know, who's going to win. But yeah, I think it's good that we work out because we know what each other's doing and we help each other. And we're friends, but, you know, when competition time comes, we're for ourselves. Friendly adversaries, young, confident, and willing to take a chance. Diane Durham leaving the comforts of home in Gary, Indiana. Mary Lou Rett in Fairmont, West Virginia. A 14- and 15-year-old traveling to Houston, Texas. Why? To train with Bella Caroli, a giant in the field of women's gymnastics. Caroli, the former Romanian national coach who now lives and works with scores of aspiring young gymnasts in America. Bella Caroli, the man who developed the incomparable Nadia Comaneci. Can any of us forget Montreal 1976? Nadia exploding onto the scene, scoring an unprecedented perfect 10, a first in Olympic competition. Are Bella's American girls, Diane Durham and Mary Lou Retton, the new Nadia? It's hard to compare because they are different as temperament, you know, and personalities. Nadia was a, uh, is a great athlete, but a very cool person. Uh, she was the one who was very calculated, but with a great desire and very, very ambitious. Uh, Diane and Mary Lou, they are different. Uh, they are more open. Uh, her, their personality are very nice, you know, and very pleasant to work with them. 
and the same time, maybe, maybe the, the only thing that is very similar, all of them are very ambitious, you know, and all of them, they set high goals, and uh, with a great desire, they are going, you know, to do it. Well, he really didn't compare us to Nadia, not at all. He compared us to perfect. He doesn't compare us to any one certain gymnast. It's always perfect. If the Olympics game would be tomorrow, for sure we would have medalists. Bella Caroli no longer coaching Nadia Komenich, but now the likes of Mary Lou Redden, who has been compared by many mm. to Nadia. Mary Lou on her first discipline, the balance beam. She is four feet five inches tall from Fairmont, West Virginia, and she too moved to Houston to train with Bella. And what a powerhouse Mary Lou is. She's a tremendous tumbler and vaulter. She is the best tumbler, female tumbler in the world. A very strong young lady. Look at that. Front somersault took a step back, but a very powerful skill. She lacks in some areas of grace and elegance, and that's one of the reasons she's moved to Bella's gym, to try to get that polish that Nadia Kamenich has. Began tumbling with her older sister, who is now on full gymnastic scholarship at West Virginia University. And oddly enough, even though we haven't heard anything about Mary Lou Pryor, these championships. She beat Tracy Talavera and Julianne McNamara recently in the American Cup. Nice double back this round to top a fine routine. <laughs> good. 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 All right. <laughs> that bears one more look. Here's that front somersault. Her hips were a little low. She came up slightly short, steps back, right there. A minor deduction. Still waiting for her score, a 9-2-0. That seems a little bit low. It was a fine routine. A slight mistake on, on the front somersault, but the rest of it looked good to me. Disappointment from Mary Lou, and now Bella is disappointed as well. Well, you as you you the, the, the referee of the, of the competition, you can stop, you know, this ridiculous decision. Questioning the meet referee, but it's a very difficult procedure in gymnastics to get a score changed. At least one American getting a taste of the Romanian temper here. After first rotation, Mary Lou on that performance back to fourth place. Diane Durham still holding on to first. We'll be back with the second rotation in a moment. Second rotation of four in this national championships. It's the youngster Diane Durham against. Julianne McNamara, the veteran, for first place. You don't see Tracy Talavera's name in the top five there, and there's a well, reason for right. that. Tracy has had problems with her vault in the second rotation. Mm -hmm. There are two vaults, and of course, you take the top score of the two. Tracy's best effort was an 8 5, five. And Here's a replay of that. Tracy performing a new vault for her. As we saw in the floor exercise, she has a little trouble somersaulting. And it cost her a two-time defending national champion with growing pains, but things were different back in 1979. This is Tracy at 13 years old, tearing up the gymnasiums. It's just been a problem of adjustment in the last year or so. Well, I got taller, so it made a little, everything a little bit slower and a little bit harder. So, um, in a way, I had to go back and relearn a lot of things. She has, uh, is really mature in that. Some of the children I have uh, haven't been able to hack it, and they've uh, faltered and uh, ended up quitting or uh, not really reaching their potential. Tracy's potential has yet to be tapped. It's uh, close, and uh, the real woman in that body is going to spring out, uh, hopefully in 84. The 84 Olympic team, I guess, is my main goal. If, and if I make the Olympic team, I guess a medal and beam or something would be nice. <laughs> Tracy having a tough time of it today, but still looking forward to 84. But the young lady in the spotlight here today is the leader after the first rotation, young Diane Durham, ready for her parallel bars routine. Diane inspired by watching Nadia Komenich come away with three goals in the 76 games. Oh, oh hit a foot, foot there. there. Can't let that bother her. Small deduction. She shows a lot of poise for a young gymnast. A lot of performance would have let that mistake hurt the routine, but not Diane. I love Diane in Chicago. Look at all that. Yes. 
Sure. It was a little bit over. It was a little bit over. Better than a holiday. Yeah. The youngster with Never their coach <laughs> waiting for her score. Four right. judges, the high low scores will be thrown oh, out. They'll average the remaining two scores. For Diane's performance, a 9-6-0. So right now, that keeps her in first place. Let's take a look at it. Diane doing a flip catch, coming too close to the ball. Watch her left foot. Ouch. Hit it right there. But she didn't let it affect the rest of her routine. So Diane Durham hanging on in her first national championship to first place. Julianne McNamara scored a 9-5-0 on the vault in this rotation. She is still in second. Two more rotations to go before the all-around champion of society. We'll be back later on in this program with both. Let's go back to Chicago and John Tesh. Welcome back to the city of Chicago. We're here inside the University of Illinois Pavilion. The United States' best female gymnasts are deciding the all-around national champion. And Peter Corman, with two rotations left of four, we find the youngster, Diane Durham, in first place. Close behind is Julianne McNamara. Tracy Talavera tied way back in eighth place. That's right, and the race right now is for first place. Julianne McNamara is only .5 away from Diane Durham. Julianne will be entering her two best events, beam and bars. And what Diane has to do is simply stay on the balance beam. Her other event, floor exercise, is very strong. Right now, though, Diane Durham getting some attention from her coach, Bella Caroli. She hurt her foot on one of her earlier exercises on the uneven bars. Let's see if John Doctor everything all right, Bella? Oh, yeah. Did you hurt yourself? No, not really. <laughs> Just a little accident. <laughs> a little accident? Will it affect you in your next two uh, routines? No. And here's how it happened. Watch her left foot hit the ball right there. Diane has done this in practice before. She has a bad bone bruise on her heel. When you hit the ball that many times, it can be extremely painful. Chasing Diane, Julianne McNamara, she was second after the second rotation. And Julianne will be performing on her best event, the uneven parallel bar. She's currently ranked third in the world. This is a critical moment for Julianne. A top routine will give her the edge going into the next round as Diane will be competing on the beam, one of her weaker events. Julianne made the 1980 United States Olympic team that did not compete because of the boycott, was the 1980 national champion. And oh no, she came too close to the ball and didn't catch the front. Complete fall, critical mistake on her best event, the uneven parallel boards. Unbelievable. Must concentrate finish this routine that's a serious deduction that she's got to get in the low nine somewhere not enough to give her that edge that she needed to catch diane Durham. julianne mcnamara 17 years old who left her coach dick mulvihill who also coaches tracy okay. talavera to be coached by don peters who is now the united states olympic coach with his back to us there Waiting for Julianne's score, a 9-3-0, so a big deduction. And look what's happened here. A 14-year-old, Diane Durham, has a chance Thank to Leo. run away with the national Julian championship. Park, stop, go, okay? Oh, okay. then straight, park, bend your knees, okay? Up Diane needs an 8.85 to lead. That's not very tough. There's no new right in her teammate looking on. Diane, of course, preparing for her balance beam routine. On any other event for Diane, John, I'd say that 8.85 will be relatively easy. However, this is the balance beam. When the nerves get to you, it affects even the most experienced performers. This is the test for Diane Durham. You have to remember this piece of apparatus, four feet high, four inches wide. It's amazing what these athletes are able to do on it. Diane Durham grew up 15 miles from here, moved to Houston recently to be coached by Bella Caroli, of course, who defected to this country in 1981 after a row with Romanian government who wanted to control his gymnastics school there. Caroli, who coached Nadia to a total of nine Olympic medals in 76 and 80. And I'll tell you, John, it's hard for me to believe that this 14-year-old girl can handle this pressure so easy. It's not bothering her at all. A very nice exercise, a few minor mistakes, but no nervousness whatsoever. Oui. Here comes the dismount now. One more skill left for the balance beam. Floor exercise next to come. A double back. Nice. Good 
Why was all right. That's nice. Stop kiss. Woo! <laughs> it is Diane Durham Day here at the Pavilion in Chicago. Excellent. Yeah. A score of 9 4 0. Excellent. Perfect Good. score, of course, would be 10. Here's John Dockery with Diane. It was a 9 4 score. You satisfied? Pretty much. I mean, it was pretty good. It's not bad. I guess the foot wasn't bothering you. It is now. <laughs> it wasn't then. <laughs> you have one more to do. You have a floor exercise. That's right, but I don't think my heel will bother me because I'll be having too much fun to let it worry me. <laughs> you are having too much fun. You're on your way to your first championship. It looks like you're almost there. How does it feel? Feels pretty good. All I have to do is hit floor now. We'll be watching. Okay, now back to you, John. We certainly will, John. Thank you very much. So the standings after the third rotation, one left to decide the all-around champion, and a good lead by Diane Durham, Julianne McNamara tucked in second place. We'll be back. The Caroli with his pupil, Diane Durham, after Julianne McNamara's 9-2 on the balance beam. That leaves Diane in good position right now. Double pull out, Diane. Just if you feel fantastic. Diane only needs an 8-6-5 to be the first black to come away with an all-around national championship. Fellow giving Diane instruction, telling her to do a double twist at the end of her routine, unless she feels real good and wants to do the more difficult double back. So this will be interesting. What will she do? Diane Durham, 14 years old. One routine away from capturing a national championship. Very difficult opening tumbling run. Full twisting double back. If she hits this, she'll be on her way. Excellent. decision double back or double twist double twist solid playing it safe diane has led the entire competition she showed tremendous strength she didn't let the pressure get to her she hurt her foot and fought right through the competition that's the champion yeah that you are the united states new champion diane you know what it is? The best gymnast in this country. Woo! All right, there. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank for the picture. All right. Woo! All right. Big dream, honey. Big dream. All right. Good gymnast. Brown kid. All right. 14 year old Diane Durham electrifying the audience here in Chicago. 965, that makes it official, Peter Corman. She is our new national champion. Going after the likes of Tracy Talavera, Julianne McNamara, Kathy Johnson, the 1983 all-around national champion, Diane Durham, performing the duties accorded a national champion, signing autographs. And Tracy Talavera, our dethroned champion, didn't have a good day, but we know the type of athlete she is. She'll be back. The final results, Durham, McNamara, Tracy finished back in 15th place. Unbelievable competition for a 14-year-old. Now, of course, that competition was held two weeks ago, and also the men's all-around competition was held two weeks ago as well. Peter Corman and I will be here to tell you more about that and also about a fine Soviet performer as we close in on the World University Games after this word from your local stations. 
week, CBS Sports will bring you the World University Games, and my colleague, analyst Peter Corman, will be with me to bring you coverage of the gymnastics there. And Peter, you were covering the mixed pairs international gymnastics competition uh, a few months back, and you got a chance to meet a lady who was really in the mold of Soviet Olga Corbett. Her name, Natalia Yurchenko. That's right, John, and the Soviets always do this before the Olympic Games. They spotlight a few key individuals, hopefully getting their name known to the judges, so they'll do well in the Olympics Games. And they've done this with Yurchenko. We saw Yurchenko, she's amazing. All right, let's take you back now to Peter Corman's call of Yurchenko on her floor exercise in the mixed pairs competition. Natalia Yurchenko from the Soviet Union getting ready for the floor exercise. A fine event for her, and she's a very powerful tumbler. the lift in this opening tumbling run, full twist and double somersault, beautiful. Natalia is being compared to the great Soviet gymnast Ludmila Tereshova from the late 60s and early 70s. And they're from the same club in the Soviet Union, the Dynamo Gym Club. Very graceful and elegant performer, yet Natalia has the power that Tereshova may have lacked. years old, surprised everyone in the gymnastics community this season when she tied for first place in the all-around at the World Cup, proving herself as one of the top female gymnasts in the world. Very innovative gymnast, has made a new vault and also has a move on the balance beam named after her. Going into her third double somersault, very difficult. Three double backs in the routine. Here's the last one. Very nice. It's going to be great to watch her.